Hey everyone, I'm Rob Hoyle. I'm joined with Dr. Bruce Hirsch, a specialist in infectious disease here at Northwell Health. A lot of people, obviously, the last couple of weeks have been pretty, uh, pretty. A lot of anxiety. A lot of people are, let's say, let's put it, you know, bluntly, freaked out about this whole coronavirus thing. So we're going to try to calm some fears here today and talk about facts. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Dr. Hirsch, obviously, people are feeling a lot of anxiety right now. What can you say maybe to calm their fears a little bit? Well, Rob, it's really good to be with you. It's good to be six feet away from you. Absolutely. And everything that we're doing has to be mindful in this day of age of the fact that there's a new virus in town. And there are steps that each of us can take. And one of those steps is being six feet away from other individuals. Another of those steps is washing hands and avoiding the circumstance of picking up virus in, in the environment and putting it on our face, in infecting our mucous membranes, our eyes, nose, and mouth, and being careful. It turns out that doing the right things and being careful, including social distancing, is helping, is making an impact, and that's something that everyone needs encouragement to keep on doing the right thing. Yeah, I think when we heard a couple of weeks ago about staying in and working from home and all these drastic measures that we've never really uh, have dealt with before, but it seems like that is working. It seems that's wor working, and the rate of increase in our area here in New York, where it's, it's happening a lot, the rate of increase is finally slowing, and that's very, very encouraging. It's hard to do all these things. My wife is a doctor. She's promises me that she'll never complain about anything again. Mm. This is so disruptive to our lives, but we're literally doing this for our lives and the lives of people around us. I think one of the things too that we're hearing a lot of in the news is numbers going up, uh, deaths going up, but also too, one of the numbers that's going up right now is people who have recovered. So people are getting better. People are getting better. People are getting through this. And one of the questions that people ask me is, if I get infected with this, how is it going to affect me? What is it going to be like to go through this infection? And there's a wide range with this infection like other types of viruses. And I think it's helpful to, to remember that 80% of the time, it's a relatively mild case. It's mild, but it's, it can be miserable. Uh, it can be, uh, consist of having fever, of feeling fatigued, of having aches and pains, but it's something that people are able to get through the vast majority of time. What's concerning is that some of us are vulnerable because of age, because of other health conditions, of getting more severe cases. This is much more dangerous than the flu, for example. There's been also a lot of talk about maybe things that we can do to make ourselves healthier or to help us be, you know, have a better shot if we did get this. So what are some of the things that people can do. I think you were talking, we were talking about before we went on here, a little bit about diet being important right now. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that. We look at the risk factors for having severe disease. And the risk factors include diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. And the healthy diet that's recommended for all those conditions turns out to have a global health benefit. There's a study that I think is very, very interesting from a few years ago demonstrating that increasing the fiber content in laboratory mice helps them fight off viral infections. Eating right, avoiding some of the fats and meats, eating more fiber, eating more vegetables, eating well promotes one's health. It promotes the healthy bacteria in the intestine. It helps focus our immune system to be able to fight this virus better and to avoid some of the ex excess inflammation that can be so dangerous to us. Right, and so with that said, I would also think that just other things that normally when you are nervous about getting a cold or if you get a cold that can help you uh, sleep is probably important, even though a lot of us have anxiety right now and we want to watch those late newscasts to see what's happening. But I guess when we have time to recharge our batteries, that's probably a good thing too. I think that makes a lot of case. I, I think you make a good case for that. While we're on our own, socially distancing, what can we do to strengthen our resilience if we should become inf infected with this virus? If we're stronger when we deal with the virus, then we won't be as sick, and then we won't be as sick for as long, and they w we won't be able to pass it on to so many other people. 
So things that strengthen the immune system include diet, eating healthy, it includes sleeping well, it includes dealing with stress, exercise, if it's done to a moderate degree, helps the immune system be more powerful. That can make a difference also. Wow, okay, so we're getting some questions coming in from our audience, and, and one question we're getting is, can you get it from ordering takeout? And a lot of people are ordering takeout right now, uh, and, and they want to support their businesses too by ordering takeout. Can you get it from ordering takeout? I think the chance of getting it from takeout is very, very unlikely. Now, there was a study in, in a scientific journal, and it studied um, how long does the virus last, <coughs> last on certain surfaces. And um, we do know that this virus can survive on cardboard for a um, little bit less than 24 hours. That was done in the laboratory setting. What we want to do is to wash hands. We want to wash hands after touching anything. It turns out that most of us, without realizing it, touch our face about 20 times an hour. Mm -hmm. And if you take a uh, takeout and it could be contaminated from a, uh, a, a delivery person who may be shedding this virus, there is a remote possibility that it can get on your hands and then we can inoculate ourselves. Take the takeout, uh, put it aside, wash your hands before doing anything else and it will be safe. Yeah, so we're hearing a lot about the hand washing right now and it seems like 20 seconds when you count or you sing happy birthday seems like a long time. Does it really make a difference if you wash your hands for 20 seconds opposed to 10 seconds? Well, 15 seconds is the time period that I've come across reading different articles. And it's not just the matter of time, it's a matter of friction. You have to wash the hands with enthusiasm. So get up a good lather and, and uh, rub all the surfaces of the hands over at least a 15 second period and then rinse it off. And then the drying process is also useful to be able to apply additional friction to, to uh, take this away. The soap gets inside the virus and blows it apart. When you're washing hands, and you've been exposed to the virus, you are killing COVID-19. You're protecting yourself, you're protecting your community. When you wash hands correctly, you're doing something positive for your health, you're doing something positive for all of us. So if we kind of follow these simple guidelines, washing our hands often, staying six feet away from people, staying away from crowds, staying indoors, we're really significantly reducing our uh, chances. We're significantly reducing the chances and a little bit of a decrease in the infectivity to other people makes a huge difference. So without any, uh, without any changes, a person who's sick without any behavioral changes can infect two and a half other people. It's much more infectious than influenza, for example, than the flu virus and one person can cause the infection in over 400 people over the course of a month. If that infectivity is reduced, not even all the way, but if it's reduced partially, if a person uh, reduces it by one, if they infect 1.3 other people, then it, it, uh, that person can infect 30 other individuals. So it has an outside effect, an outsize effect uh, in terms of benefit. Great, we're getting another qu uh, question from our audience. How long should people expect to be sick if they do con contract the virus? For a mild case, um, uh, we're generally sick for about 14 days. For more severe cases, it can be longer, for greater than three weeks. For a person who has um, uh, moderately severe or severe illness, the uh, duration is very variable. It goes between three to six weeks. So, uh, you know, we're looking for bright, uh, you know, silver linings. We're looking for bright spots in the news when we're hearing about the coverage. And one of the things that I've been hearing, and I know that we're starting to do here at Northwell, is clinical trials. How promising are the clinical trials on patients who are in, in really bad shape and in critical condition, stuff like this? These, these clinical, clinical trials are going to make a big difference in how we care for these patients. This is a brand new virus. We don't know anything about how this specific virus is going to affect us. Every person, every patient and family member who consents to one of these clinical trials is going to improve the health and our knowledge for 
everybody. So there are a couple of different uh, clinical trials that I'm involved with here at Northwell, and one is that antiviral remdesivir, and we're about to get this anti, um, about to get this trial uh, off the off the ground, starting uh, starting shortly, and this vi this antiviral compound decreases the amount of the virus inside of a sick person. The early phase of this infection is when the virus is active. Some people get sick later. And what happens is that later on, there's an intense inflammatory change. And that inflammation can cause lung damage and can cause problems throughout the body. We have a trial of a medication that blocks some of the inflammatory messages inside the body to soothe that pathologic inflammatory response. Um, and uh, so far, it looks like it's well tolerated. And we hope that people do better and better in, uh, in response to these treatments. That's fantastic. We'll get another uh, question. Is it safe to take allergy meds if you have light symptoms? And that's from uh, Charmaine. Yes, it's safe to take care of yourself. The allergy medications are, are safe. It's important to be able to optimize your health in every single way. Um, and that makes a, a lot of sense. Now, there are certain medications that we prefer people not to take. Okay, yeah, uh, there's those? some evidence that taking Advil, Motrin, Ibuprofen, taking some of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may enhance the ability of the virus to be a little bit more active. That's still not certain, but we prefer people, if they're sick from this, to be able to take Tylenol instead of Motrin. Tylenol instead of Motrin. All right, good advice. So, you know, this is a kind of a strange time of the year. We're, we're coming into the, the warmer weather. We're getting days that it's nice and days that it's not so nice out. And these are the time of the year. Sometimes we just get normal colds. How do we know the difference between a normal cold and COVID-19? And when do we call our doctor? Well, if you have a question and have a concern, calling your doctor makes sense. Calling your doctor as opposed to showing up in your doctor's office. We want to keep the doctor's office as safe for all of us, particularly for the people who really need the doctor's office, really need doctor's care to help with their diabetes, to help with their heart disease. A cold um, uh, may cause runny nose. It might, might cause uh, rhinitis. It might cause sore throat and headache. Those symptoms are very unusual as a marker of COVID-19 infection. The most common uh, signs that we've been seeing with COVID-19 are fever, are dry cough, um, and occasionally muscle aches. Uh, there are a lot of other symptoms that we've been seeing. Some people, for example, have lost their, taste, their sense of smell and lost their sense of taste. There are a number of individuals who have diarrhea. The thing about COVID-19 is that if it's mild, we want you to stay safe and stay at home. Um, if you have COVID-19 or infection similar to it, watching how you feel over a day by day is very important. And the danger signals are shortness of breath. Yeah. Getting short of breath is something that should really prompt a direct call to your doctor so that he or she can advise you appropriately. Great, that's great uh, advice. So we're getting another question from, from Sam, and, and this is a question, so like we're being told to stay home, how do we make sure we're not spreading it to our children and to our spouses? Well, if the home is a safe place, hopefully our children, our spouse is safe. If a person is sick and is cared for in, in a household, that becomes very challenging. If a person has the virus, if they wear a simple surgical mask, that is very effective in preventing spread to other individuals. So putting a mask on the sick person or the suspected person who has this helps everyone around him and that, or her, and that could make a difference. But the basics, staying six feet away, washing hands before and after every contact, uh, those really make a big difference. Yeah. You know, there was some talk in the beginning of this uh, outbreak that also the warm weather might be helpful. Does that still look like it's, it's a possibility or is that we don't have enough information on that? We don't have enough information. Uh, there's some beautiful days that are happening around here uh, now and I hope that that's the case, but we just don't know yet. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap up here. Is there anything else that you wanna tell the audience to help maybe 
allay some of those fears and, and anxiety uh, during this kind of troubling time? I just want to say that this is very anxiety provoking. And this is a time to really um, uh, uh, support our biggest values. What is most important to us? What's most important to us is living well and living healthy. What's most important to us is the health and well-being of our family, of our friends. Anybody who's sick in our community is a, impacts on our health directly. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get through this pandemic as quickly and as easily as possible. Uh, okay, well, Dr. Hirsch, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. If you want more information, go to northwell.edu slash prepared.